Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on mentors and motivators who are consistently reshaping, redefining, and rediscovering the field of medical health care. I'm pleased to welcome Dr. Sanjita Patti, an integrative obstetrician gynecologist with a passion for educating and equipping medical practitioners. Welcome, Dr. Patty. Thank you. Here in Orlando, live at the 27th Annual Spring Congress, you led a presentation on immune system protocols and cancer. Can you give us a, an overview on, on what you discussed in that lecture? Yeah, definitely. First of all, this is an area of great excitement and enthusiasm for me uh, because it feels like my career has led up to the point where I'm actually able to help people with cancer be in the driver's seat for their own health. Um, give them their power back because there have been things I've learned over the last 30 years in medicine that have brought me to this point. And um, to the point where I didn't start off with cancer patients as being a prime person who walks through the door. But at this point, they are coming through the door almost every week. So we have to learn how to figure out how to help them. And there's two things that you always want people to know when they come to you. One is why. Why did you get cancer? What's behind it? What's the base? Right? Because we know that most cancers are not genetic in terms of family history. You know, we say, oh, we don't have a family history of cancer. That doesn't matter because most people who get cancer don't have a family history of cancer, right? It's the epigenetics that controls that. It's the above genetics, the things that turn on and off, the cells, the hormonal balance, the nutritional balance, the toxins in the body, the stresses in the mind, and the state of the body's oxygenation. That's the five areas that cause that deterioration. So I always like people to go home with why. Why do you get cancer? And then the second part is what? What can we do about it? And those whites are actually very much centered around those five areas. So what we've done is when we have somebody who's trying to build their immune system, whether it's a cancer or a chronic infection, which we're seeing a lot of chronic infections that can't, you know, people can't get rid of. And it turns out that both of those are exactly the same because uh, at first we used to know that, you know, all gastric tumors were caused by H. pylori. Liver cancers are caused by flukes and hepatitis, right? Um, cervical cancer by HPV. And as time has gone on, we've realized that every cancer is associated with some kind of an infection because it's when the immune system fails that you get a cancer. It's when the immune system fails that you get an infection. So how do you correct that? Um, and so we go around the causes. The causes are generally, if I had to put it in a nutshell, that you have some kind of predisposition and then the speed of the engine is running faster than what the fuel tank has in it. And what's the speed of the engine? The speed of the engine is the stress in your life, both the conscious and the subconscious stressors in the mind. The speed of the engine is how fast are you running physically, right? So if you're running physically fast, your life is fast, you have a checklist that doesn't end, you have all kinds of stressors, for every single one of those, you're using fuel, hormones and nutrients. That's your fuel tank. So if your phone buzzes, you're using the hormone cortisol, you're using the nutrients in the nutrient box, right? You drive on the highway, you're doing the same. You're worrying about a cancer, you're doing the same. If the speed of the engine is fast, you don't have the nutrients or the fuel to actually protect the body. So it's very simple, you get run down. And that is the circumstance that we usually see cancer in. You know, we, a lot of times cancer just follows a whole sequence of stressors, including, oh, my husband or my wife was sick. 
I took care of them and two months later, I have cancer, right? That's a, like a common story because they get run down. So when we go to correct this, we usually go first to getting them to feel well. And how do we, what, what are the areas and what, how do you know that they're feeling well? So I've never seen somebody come in with a cancer who tells me that their energy's great, their sleep is great, their mood is great, their anxiety is not non-existent, and they have no gastric symptoms. There's no way. Cancer, people with cancer or with immune defects always have symptoms. So the first thing you do is you correct the five areas to get them to feel good. That's phase one. That's what I'm gonna be talking about in the talk, right? Basic, basic. Measure the hormones, 75th percentile, which is optimal protection against cancer, right? Measure the nutrients, 75th percentile. Measure the pH, make sure it's above 6.7. Measure the stress in the mind. How do you do that? You measure that by measuring heart rate variability because, as you may know, the mind is controlled by the heart, by the rhythm in the heart. So we can measure that. How do you measure the physical body? You measure it by looking at oxygenation. So we measure each one of these five areas and correct them. And usually within three months, people say, okay, I'm feeling energetic, I'm sleeping, no gastric symptoms, no anxiety, no depression. Oh, by the way, the markers are already better. You're already fixing the immune system. And you're fixing it starting with basics but I would say that out of those basics, the most important factor is the joy in the heart because the joy in the heart is the frequency and the vibration that programs the water that's in your cells, that's 70% of where your immune system lies. So that you've corrected. Then we have a phase two in our program. And in the phase two, we use methods to accelerate the immune system, like heat, light, sound, um, ozone, to get, go after more infections, um, argentin-23, which is silver. So we have two phases. So in my talk, I'm going to be presenting the basics, phase one, feel good, phase two, get rid of the cancer. Sounds like these protocols have come a long way. Do you anticipate a lot more advancement in the coming years? Yeah, what, it's really funny what's happening, and I think this is happening all in medicine, you know, as we speak all through every single category you see, which is that what you'll find is that the speed at which we are growing in every field is exponential. It's going like that. So one day, it's regional hyperthermia, and the next day somebody's come out with the next device, right? Um, as an example, I just added a photodynamic therapy treatment to our immune protocols. And this treatment has been used in Hong Kong to completely reverse traumatic brain injury within seven treatments. It reverses it both pathologically and it reverses it also clinically. So we're also finding, and what it's doing is it's working at the level of the water. Again, if you change the structure of the water, the cells start to get back to health. So we have found that that new thing has started to make even a greater difference, especially in people who have tumors in the brain. So I feel like, and every other day, like just yesterday, a cancer specialist who's integrative came to me and said, you know, there's this gene thing they're doing, because I don't focus a lot on genes. And the reason why I don't is because once you have cancer, what, what, benefit is it to me with, with the program I'm using to just control the epigenetics, which is control the water, control the joy, get everything back in line. It it's ends up that the program's the same, uh, whether the gene is one way or the gene is the other, so far. Now, I'm, I feel like there's now new information coming out that will completely uh, obliterate what I just said, because I think there's new stuff coming out where it will change what we do in a better way, not just be information that's sitting out there and you don't know what to do with it. Do you find it overwhelming? No. No, I don't. I, find, I think that the thing that helps it not be overwhelming is just that if you've got a basic model that's that basic, and 
I've been applying that model for 15 years at, at Sejun. Our institute's been applying that for 15 years to reverse diabetes, to reverse Alzheimer's, to, re you know, to reverse all kinds of things. So if you keep in mind that you should also go, always go back to the basics, and the basic is actually defined by nature. It's not defined by men. So in my practice, we've developed a five-point model, which is basic. Measure the hormones, nutrients, toxins, mind and body. Optimize all of those, right? If you look at how that approximates nature, because you know, in long living cultures, which exist all around the world, the cell doesn't start to degenerate until the age of 80 at a cell level. In the United States, the degeneration starts at age 35 at the cell level. What's that secret? What's that magic? Is it that they're doing hormonal and nutritional therapy? No. What is it? So if you look at that model I just showed you and think about it like this, the hormones, sun, nutrients, earth and soil, right? That's where the colloids come from. Detoxification, water, water, water. And water coming down the mountain, picking up the colloids, it's structured, right? Mind, joy. It's really the joy in the heart that controls that. Body, oxygen. These people climb mountains until they're 110. So all we're really doing is what man does. Man is always looking to approximate nature. So if we took ourselves back, like there's you know, a great case of a guy here in Florida in Boca Raton who had stage four lung cancer. They told him he didn't have any time to live. He was from an island in Icaria. He said, well, Greece, one of the blue zones. And he goes, I'm just gonna go back there to die. He goes there at age 64, and within, you know, then he starts, you know, enjoying himself, waiting to die, drinking wine, laughing, waiting to die, you know, hanging around with his friends, waiting to die, you know, taking care of goats, gardening, being in the mountain, climbing the mountain. He lived to 109. Phenomenal. <laughs> it's wow. That, you know, so. So I feel like all that we're learning is go back to it and not go back to it, go forward to it. I call it the ancient future, just common sense. So, and you speak to the basics really beautifully. It's, it seems so intuitive. In your beginning, did, did you just start in the anti-aging, this integrative space, or did it take studies like at the A4M to, to motivate you to that path? Yeah, A4M, what was, brought you? A4M was my major motivator in terms of the academics. Um, and, and I say that so I'm an OBGYN, so of course I practiced in private practice. And then I joined Bill Gates' project, Safe Motherhood, and I got to travel around the world and help traditional birth attendants and midwives with um, lowering maternal mortality because women die in labor, right? So I did that for seven years and I realized because my major teachers there were midwives and traditional birth attendants. So I was like, gosh, my toolbox of pharmacy and surgery is just way inadequate for what, you know, the people in the field have. And honestly, they, their tricks are better than mine. And, you know, I went to Georgetown. I Incredible. thought I learned some pretty good tricks there. Mm -hmm. um, so when I came back, I started to explore things. And there was a lady who told me that, hey, you know what? There is a group called A4M. And in 2004, I attended my first A4M lecture and conference in Chicago. And it was just a life changer. I said, oh, this is what I'm going to do. And within the next year, I ended up, you know, speaking. And uh, I started in hormones. I'm a gynecologist, so it was really, like, that's where I started. And then realized, you know, these hormones don't really work unless they have the right nutrients. Because the thyroid needs zinc, selenium, and iodine. Estrogen needs cobalt. Testosterone needs zinc. So that's how that part developed. And then I realized that if you don't detoxify, you're not going to get the right result either. And so over a year, the hormone nutrient, toxins, mind, body, 
that framework developed. Did you shut the lights on your traditional practice and mm -hmm. start clean in an integrative mm -hmm. design? Yeah, yeah. I left Washington, D.C., ready to start practice with an OBGYN group here in town. And, um, you know, I did the tour and heard that I was going to have seven minutes for each patient. And I kind of went foggy because I was like, seven minutes per patient? What am I going to do in seven minutes? So I quit and um, hung out, didn't know what exactly I was going to do. And about six months later, I got hooked up. It's kind of a funny story. I like went to a psychic who told me that <laughs> I was uh, going to do mind, body, spirit medicine. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, it's really funny. And I landed up, like I met some lady and then I landed up at A4M. Yeah. And yeah. That quantum. <laughs> yes. So I ended up not, yeah, it was just a clean break. Um, but when I started in my practice, I really started within all insurances. And I started as a gynecologist who nobody knew because I was totally new in Orlando. Um, and I actually only saw three or four patients the first month because I knew nothing about advertising or anything. But uh, three or four patients then, you know, turned into, and I was really happy because I didn't know what I was doing anyway. So like I'd call the pharmacy, I'd go to A4M, I'd figure out how to handle the patients. Um, and then, you know, we got to the point where we were seeing 30 or 40 new patients a month because you know, the patients that get better, they just tell their... And then it went from women to men, men to children, and now we treat infants to 90 men and women. So let's speak a bit about women. Your practice rooted a lot in preventative care. We live in a really complicated world. We just ran a workshop here, you know, the female patient and sustainability and the future, right, of our generations. When you think, when you see your female patients, are you seeing, you know, common concerns? Do you have any real guidelines, things that you're seeing in the past year or so? Cognitive decline or bone loss or breast cancer? Where are your, your thoughts on, on where this is going and what you're seeing in female care? Yeah, that's such a great question. So, first of all, it is a time in history where women are becoming more powerful. And the real benefit that we have right now is that whereas the medical system was broken a long time ago, the best thing that's happened is now it's so broken that everybody really knows it, right? So we're spending more than any other country, and we rank 35th. So, and anybody just interacts with the medical system for a moment and realizes that you have to go to the left toe doctor for the left toe, the right toe doctor for the right toe. You have to go to um, a woman in, who's pregnant, which my daughter just had her baby a couple weeks ago. Um, she had to go to one doctor for this thing and another doctor to the other thing, and they just won't talk to each other. And um, you look, for example, at hormonal care, and there's three sectors, adrenals, thyroid, and ovaries. The ovaries are taken care of by who? The gynecologist. Yeah. The thyroid by the endocrinologist, and the adrenals by no one. So, how do, so our care is disjointed, and the, and the great thing is people realize this, right? So what's happened? What's happened is there's a huge paradigm shift in what Americans are thinking. And that what that is, is most people realize that the only way to get through this is for you to empower yourself to be in the driver's seat for your own health. And that is the only job that a healer, a practitioner has is to empower that patient to be in the driver's seat yeah. so that they really don't need a doctor. And um, what, do you, what is your role then? What's your role as a doctor? Mm -hmm. You are providing awareness. You are providing Advice. inspiration and guidance. Mm -hmm. And then you're providing protocols and tools that are simple enough that they can be in the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. So those protocols and tools are in those five areas that I just talked about. And what you do is over 90 days to three, six months, 
you're basically handing them the tools so they know how to eat, they know how to, and we coach them real closely. We coach them like twice a week during that 90 days so that by the end of that 90 days, they barely need us. Um, so let's go back to your question about women's care. Women are in a position of disempowerment when it comes to their care, and it's the same with men. You go to the doctor. The doctor's in a white coat. He is speaking to your subconscious because we're programmed that way. The subconscious is 90% of our health. So if I sit in front of my patient and I say, you have PCOS, which means you will not probably be able to get pregnant easily. Mm -hmm. It is literally a self-fulfilling prophecy. You tell your cancer patient they have 90 days to live and they die in 90 days. It's not because you're Merlin the wizard. It's because you they just, begin. that patient took that in. It programmed the water structure in their body. Mm. So what you asked me about women is that we have to become empowered enough to realize that we have a voice and men the same way. You know, women literally and men avoid the medical system because they're worried about the lab being abnormal and you know, in a position of empowerment, it's like, oh, I have an opportunity to correct my cholesterol here by lowering my stress, because of course the number one cause of cholesterol elevation is stress, because cortisol is made from cholesterol, right? So if you have stress, you're going to make more cholesterol. Um, so if we could look at information that way, we have power. If we look at information like, oh, is it normal? What's the doctor going to say I have to do? That's when you, so when you tell me, yes, all disease is increasing. Osteoporosis, breast cancers, everything is increasing, right? If you look at a high level, some causes, it's our chronic stress response, not the chronic stress, the chronic stress response. You can't change the hurricane, but you can change the way in which you respond to a hurricane, right? Mm -hmm. you, can you can respond in a way that doesn't affect your internal organs. So that's where the power comes from. The power comes from that. Osteoporosis, osteopenia, your bone density is low, mm -hmm. let's build it. Mm -hmm. You have cancer, let's correct your immune system. This is a great opportunity for us to pay attention to your life and the joy in your life. And are you taking advantage of every single moment and every single day? Mm -hmm. So for every single condition, I would tell you the same. I don't see anything disheartening in it at all. I have seen women correct anything and everything on that list. Even the most terminal things, supposed terminal. What about female hormones and health? There's misconceptions, there's confusion, there's a skeptical traditional industry. What do you think are the most common misunderstandings you hear? Do you address them? What do you say? Oh, you have to address them. Mm -hmm. So let's go to nature. When you go to the blue zones around the earth, do you think that people replace their hormones? They don't. No, right. And they live long lives and they're fine. Right. Hey, my mother didn't use it. My grandmother didn't use it. Now let's go back to the triangle of hormones, right? Adrenals are on the bottom. Mm -hmm. They make your life hormone cortisol. Then you have thyroid. Then you have the ovaries. Mm -hmm. When women in countries have good adrenal thyroid function and the ovaries go, big deal. The ovaries mm -hmm. are supposed to go, right? right? But if you live in a state where your ovarian production is supporting the cortisol pathway. When the ovary goes, the bottom drops out. So we don't have the option of not supporting the adrenal thyroid pathway. Mm -hmm. So that's one big one that we have to understand, okay? Because as soon as the adrenals are out, it knocks the thyroid out. It knocks the receptor site out. So and our thyroid is independently compromised right now because we're exposed to Wi-Fi all the time and 5G, right? Yeah. Um, so 
that's one of the misconceptions is just that it's not natural, okay? And uh, that it wasn't natural, that if you want to live a long, healthy life, not just long, because we're not talking about living longer, okay? Nobody dies before they're supposed to die, and nobody's born before they're supposed to be born. So, yeah. you know, yeah. we don't know that part. But we want to live well. We want to live knowing our name, not in a wheelchair, being active, productive, laughing, vibrant citizens, right? And we can. And we have proof because we've studied the Blue Zones and know that the people in the Blue Zones climb the mountains, play, laugh, and sing till the middle of the night. They're still smoking and drinking. It's not like they're living clean, clean lives, right? Mm. Um, but they're living a life of joy. Um, they have not 36 hours of things to do in a 24-hour day. It's our Sounds thought beautiful. process, right? Yeah. Um, and we, ha we have to think about that. That is what the ancient future is. That is where humanity's headed. Humanity's headed for the families to come back to community, to have more support systems. To, you know, that's where humanity's headed anyway. Um, but So misconception number one is that, is the hormonal thing. And, Actually, if you take the anti-aging terminology to restorative and regenerative type medicine, and you realize that if you take a population from infant to 90 or infant to 100, right? The majority of that population does not need hormonal replacement. They need optimization in the other areas. Mm -hmm. The nutrition, the detoxification, avoid the GMOs, get rid of the Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. be in joy, get the get oxygen right. That stuff, mm -hmm. right? Um, get some sunlight, mm -hmm. get naked, get in the sun, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, if, you, if you bring the program to a restorative program and you realize that we're not giving you treatment, if your car is missing gas, oil, water, and air, which one are you going to replace? It just turns out that we measure and we replace what's missing. And then you allow the body to do what it's supposed to do, which is to keep you healthy, happy, energetic, and full of ease, yeah. free of chronic disease, right? Absolutely. Okay, so the misconception number one is that it's much wider than the hormonal thing. See, in our practice, we've had over 10,000 patients. Do you know how many cancers we've had? Less than 12. And why? That's completely against any statistic. Right. Why is that? Because you're doing everything that's needed to help the body get back to its optimal Being state. Healthy environment. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're not mm -hmm. stuck on just the hormone or just the nutrient or just the pH or, right? Mm -hmm. It's basic, basic. Mm -hmm. um, the second misconception comes from the discussion around progesterone. Mm -hmm. Progesterone, because all of the studies have used progestin, which is a synthetic derivative, it's not, the molecule is like, that's progesterone. And you yes. got another little Mickey Mouse thing hanging wow. off the side, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted, your body wanted water, would you give it water or would you give it something that's like water? It's, of course it's not going to work. Um, so all of the studies up front, uh, and even around the world, many of them, used progestin for the progesterone. And they found five to eight fold increase in clots, strokes, mm -hmm. heart attacks, and cancers, of course, mm -hmm. right? Since then, the largest study done is actually the French cohort study. They've, they've actually shown, they were like, why did these people use the, the abnormal conjugated equine estrogen? And then on top of it, progestin, right? So when they did their study, which is actually equally as long, they were able to show that if you used a natural progesterone, which is bioidentical progesterone, and you used bioidentical estradiol through the skin, that basically there is no increase. You actually decrease the rates, including the cancer rates. So um, that really was just a dichotomy of the way the studies were done. These things are hard to break. 20 years later, people are still talking about progestogens as if, and it's because it's entered our water system. The mind is in the water, the memory's in the water, right? So it's, it, it really just takes time to, to correct, but that, that is the number two misconception. 
Do you know what the cancer rate is among women who are low in progesterone? Tenfold higher. Breast cancer rate, fivefold higher. And the reason is because progesterone is the most important hormone in the body to stop cell proliferation. So estrogen makes the cells divide. Progesterone makes the cells protected, so right? Cells just have free range. All cancer cells, all mm -hmm. around the body. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is a really important little little fact. Mm -hmm. And um, so when we give people progesterone, not only are we able to say that it doesn't cause cancer, but we're actually able to say that it protects you because your body has none. I'm not treating you. You see when people ask you about side effects, right? When I give somebody whose progesterone level is zero progesterone, right? I'm gonna have the effect of progesterone up to the physiological norm. And then I'll get the effect of having too much if I give too much. It's like water, right? Too little, kidney failure. Too much, kidney failure, right? physiological yeah. level that protects. These are not mm -hmm. treatments. These are bringing your body back. It's like your, again, the car analogy. Yeah. Fill the gas tank. Don't overfill it. Yep. Don't overheat Fill it. Fill the air. Yep. Don't overfill it, right? Mm -hmm. The same idea. Mm -hmm. so, um, so progesterone is, so misconception number one, why didn't our ancestors have to take it? Mm -hmm. I answered that for you, right? Mm -hmm. Misconception number two, is this progesterone progestin battle and I could keep going but those oh, are the sure. two big ones you know the the thyroid is another one because you know that thyroid controls temperature yeah what do you think your major immune system is it's temperature right so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you have to correct the thyroid function mm. yeah incredibly empowering message I guess to summarize if you had to give an advice or two to the physician entering into this field or in this field, but maybe facing some hurdles, what do you say? You're on the right path. Mm -hmm. Anybody who you know, follows this path is not following it from their head. They're following it from their heart because they know that it's the only way and it's the right way. The right way is to learn how to empower your patient, to protect themselves, to be vibrant and healthy. So that's one message is you, there is hope. You will be able to be successful. We are, we've been open for 15 years. And you know, it, it's sometimes a challenge in the beginning because you're questioned by your colleagues. But you know that your heart is what actually contains the information in it. So that's one thing. The second thing is that I believe it's very important to get properly trained in the field. And um, I believe it's very important to pursue an actual board certification um, through the MMI and the American Board of uh, Integrative Medicine because that allows you to be in the field in a recognized specialty. And you know, this happens in history, like when emergency medicine came along, it didn't have a board and there was no certification. So this is mm -hmm. this is normal. Mm -hmm. It's normal that you know at it some point, yes, it goes through the phases. Yeah. Right. So I feel like you know the first thing is don't give up because you're absolutely on the right path. You're on the only path. Mm -hmm. The other path of conventional medicine mm -hmm. has some role. It mm -hmm. will not take you where you want. Um, mm -hmm. And then if I give you the third message it's going to be that take 90 days and regenerate yourself first. It's the most unselfish thing you can ever do. Mm -hmm. And then the vibration that you give off and the frequency that you give off is the frequency of regeneration where you can help your family, your friends, your patients, mm -hmm. and humanity. Thank you so much, Dr. Patty. Thank you. Your message is beautiful, and we're thrilled to have you here at the A4M Spring Congress. Thank you, Laura. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you. You're amazing. Really amazing. Yeah. Appreciate your that. team is great. Mm -hmm.